Hi guys, this is Miss Isbell here, and I'm going to help you get your data table set up for your first lab. I hope that you guys have been enjoying your first couple days of school here, and I look forward to meeting you guys on Monday is when I'm going to be back. So as you guys know, um, just like in physical science, data tables are going to be really important for every experiment. If we have them set up, we will be able to do the experiment and have everything um, recorded nicely and organized in a very simple way using a data table. Now when we're reading through our procedures, anytime we see record in the data table, we need to have a spot to record in the data table. So if we're looking here for our first one, looking at title volume, step number one, measured height recorded in the data table. First thing we're going to have in our data table is height. Now a really great unit for height is going to be meters. We're going to be using the metric system, so that means there's no inches and feet. We're going to keep with our standard SI units, so meter, liter, and gram. So we're going to start with our height. Now it doesn't matter for our data table if we continue writing down or across. It's going to give us the same thing, so whichever way you prefer is fine by me. I'm just going to have mine go across. 100% correct if you have yours going down. All right, so if you look at step number two, we're going to stretch a balloon out um, several times to stretch it out. Just a normal balloon, got it dollar general. Um, stretch it a couple times. All right, nothing to record. Step three, take a normal breath, exhale normally into the balloon. It's really important here that you do not force your breathing. This is just a normal breath in and out. We're going to blow up our balloon. Um, step four, we're pinching the end, we're not tying it, and then we're going to measure the diameter of the balloon, and then we see record in the data table. Now, when we go to record the diameter of our balloon, using our ruler here, we're going to set it, um, let's see if I can show you this here a little bit better, where we're going to be measuring kind of the width of the balloon here, so starting at the zero centimeters, um, we see that it is... Um, roughly 17 centimeters. Now we don't want to measure the length, so we're not going to go this way. We're just going to do the width of the balloon. Um, so in our data table, we're going to have diameter. And that was Ellen in the background there. And our unit is centimeters. So we need a spot to record. All right. Um, number five, we're going to repeat steps two and three four more times. So we can let the air out of our balloon. We're going to stretch our balloon a couple times, take a normal breath in, blow up the balloon without forcing our breathing. So this is going to give us a total of five trials. Um, so off to the side here, we can add trials over here. I'm just going to try and keep the data table nice. I'm going to put trials to the left. We have our first one, and then we repeat four more times. Two, three, four, grand total of five times. All right, step six, we're going to convert the diameter of the balloon to tidal volume using the graph and record in the data table. So we are recording tidal volume. So my next entry on the data table, tidal volume. And if we flip over to the back of our lab, this is where we're going to get this graph. Um, so if our balloon was roughly about 15 centimeters, we're going to try to find the lung volume or our tidal volume, um, estimating it using this curve. So at 15, we'll slide up to where this point is going to fall on the line. And then we'll just come over to the lung volume, and we're going to estimate, you know, maybe it's going to be around 1,800 cubic centimeters. It gives us the unit here, so we need to make sure we have the unit in our data table. Always, always, always um, for our data tables, we're going to have a label and a unit. This is going to be really important. All right. Um, step number seven, we are going to find the average tidal volume and report in the data table. Um, so down here after five trials, I can have my average. I can just make my lines go down a little bit farther. And then I'll record that here. We don't necessarily need to have an average diameter. Average height or height's going to be the same for all five trials. So this is the one that we're going to be looking for. And that's how we set this up. Um, pretty straightforward. 
let's go ahead and we'll finish setting up um, the data table so now that we can see our vital capacity. All right, step eight, inhaled as much air as possible and then blow all of that air out into the balloon. So we're going to take the biggest breath possible and we're going to fill this balloon as big as we can. We'll do the same thing. We'll pinch the end and we're going to measure the diameter and record in the data table. All right, so down here, let's start a second data table. If you want, you can keep continuing on with this one, but I'm kind of running out of room. So I'm just going to have this as our second data table. Um, we will start with diameter. And we will still be using centimeters. And we're going to repeat this, inhaling as much as possible and blowing up the balloon as big as we can in one breath four times, giving us a total of five trials. So I'll add trials. And we'll see the same one. Two, three, four, five. Step 11, we're going to convert diameters to volume, giving us our vital capacity using that same graph that we did um, for the top part. It's on the back. And this will then give us our vital capacity. centimeters. Step 12, find and record the average vital capacity. So down here I'll add my average. Again, don't necessarily need it for a diameter. Take it for my average vital capacity. And then step 13, shared your height and averages with the class in Google Sheets. I've given this document to you so you guys can input it. I would like your data to be inputted by the end of the day, 3.30, so that way people can have this to make their graphs um, that goes along with this lab. And anyway, this is how we make a data table. This is a gift to you guys. Um, being honors, you guys are going to be expected to make all of your data tables here. Um, so the more we practice, the better we're going to be, and I promise I'm going to try and keep it as simple as this. I will always let you know what you need to record and how you need to record it. Things I don't always give you will be units, uh, but if we use the SI units, meter, liters, and grams, we should be able to figure out what is the correct unit to go in our data table.